Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So today's video, we're going to do 8051 programs on the EdSim simulator. Yes, last week we uploaded one more video like this that was introducing you to the EdSim simulator. Thank you so much for all the lovely messages you sent after that. Uh, I know you'd been waiting for this. Doing programs on the board, writing programs on paper is one thing. Doing it in practice implementing it on the simulator like the way you do it in the practical exam is a different thing altogether so many times people can write perfect programs on paper when they're sitting in the practical exam with the examiner standing right behind you watching everything that you're doing on the screen there's no chance of looking here and there and trying to manage your way around at that time many students fumble some students just don't bring themselves to the situation where they can write the program. Sometimes it's due to a, a lack of confidence. Sometimes it is just a poor preparation. Sometimes it's just no exposure to the simulator. Doing everything on paper is good. But the real test is if you can execute that program, make the program run, test under different conditions, different inputs. That's what we're going to do. We did something like this last lecture, last video also. We're doing it again. Of course, we are moving ahead, more intense programs. What we had done last time was just add, subtract, multiply, divide. Now we're doing all exam questions. The first program that we'll do will be a block transfer. So there'll be a block of data stored somewhere in the memory. You'll copy that block exactly and store it somewhere else. You know where is this program used? The reason why this is a popular question, this is the program that runs in the background when you do copy paste. Come on, we do it so many times in a day. It's a regular thing, control C, control V, or if you're an Apple, command C, command V, either way. So what you do is you select a block of data, you press copy, you go somewhere else, you press, press paste. What happens in the background is the program that we're gonna do, not only on paper, but also on implementation. I will store a series of numbers, we'll run our program and we'll see whether the entire series has been copied to a different place or not. The next program will be a slight modification of this question, this is called block inverted block transfer inverted block transfer or block reversal string reversal however you want to call it there'll be a block of data let's say one two three four five it should be copied but not as it is it should be inverted and copied so one two three four five should become five four three two one uh that's basically it's a prelude to checking whether a string is a palindrome or not a forward and the reversed part of the string if they are compared and they are the same that means the string is a palindrome so this is one step before that the reversal part of the string Anyway, so uh, that's our second program. Again, we will do it on paper. First, I'll show it to you on paper. Then we will implement it. Implement it on the simulator and run it and see whether the block has been inverted or not. The next one, big question. A lot of times asked. Take the last 10 papers of Mumbai University. You'll see it in two or maybe three times. So that's quite, quite a big proper probability of it coming again. Which one? Highest number, finding the highest number. Yes, we have not even made a video of this on the blackboard. Finding the highest number in a given series. So there'll be a series of numbers. It's like, you know, where is this used? You go to Microsoft Excel. I'm sure everybody is familiar with Excel, right? You uh, make a table, let's say of your marks, subject, marks, subject, marks, subject, marks. You made a whole table. Now, when you select all the marks on the top, there are predefined functions. The sum of all of them, the average of all of them, the max, there's a button max. When you click on that, right below the series comes the highest. So you come to know which subject you cracked it. Mostly it'll be our subject next semester. Anyway, so, uh, so uh, we're doing the program that runs in the background. When you do that, when you pick up the highest from a series, how do we do it? We'll assume a number to be the highest. We'll compare it with every number till the time a new higher number is found. As soon as we find a new higher number, we'll copy it, blah, blah, blah. Of course, I'm gonna teach you. We're gonna dry, dry run it on paper with a few numerical examples. We will load it on the simulator. We will write a series of numbers and then run the program and see whether every time it picks up the highest number or not. And with a minor tweak, a minor tweak to the program, we can even pick up the lowest in the series, the max and the min, two standard functions. The last program that we'll do today will be the most intense program I have taught you in 8051 so far. That will be sorting. Another very popular question. From real world point of view also, you need it all the time. You sort when you're shopping. 
sort on lowest price first, highest price first, max discount first, etc. So when you click that button, the program that runs in the background that sorts all the elements, that's the program that we're going to be running. There are numerous sorting algorithms. You can use any algorithm you want. The most popular one amongst the students is bubble sort. So we'll also be doing a program using bubble sort. First, I'll explain to you the whole sorting on paper with diagrams. This is your original series. What happens when you do the first iteration, then the next iteration, then the next iteration. And this is where you stop, where you get your final series. Uh, I'm going to show it to you on paper. We'll write the program first, try run it with a few numbers and see whether it works or not on paper. Then implement it on the machine, on the simulator. Enter a few numbers, run the program. It should sort it. We will test it. What happens if the numbers are same, etc and so on and then with a small twist a minor tweak of the program we'll be able to sort it in descending order once you know how to sort it in ascending order same program will work for descending with a small twist anyway so these are the four programs that we're going to do also as always you'll be getting a pdf now where is all this available this is an introduction you know how it is uh, the whole video will be there on my website www.bharatacharyaeducation.com uh, Come on my website, register yourself as a user, take the 8051 course. It has about 30, 32 videos, I mean, more or less. Uh, we, of course, we keep adding videos as and when we get the chance. Today, I had two live lectures. There was a problem with the network. I used the opportunity of that time to create videos. So as and when we get the chance, we keep adding more and more content, M more content, which is uh, more relevant to you unnecessary. I don't I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not here to just go on adding videos and make a, make a buffet of videos where uh, you just have to choose and pick what you want to watch. No, not like that. So as long as it's relevant to your subject and adds something to your knowledge, takes you further ahead. We'll be putting up more and more videos. Of late, we've started this series of implementing videos on simulator. We're doing it for 8051 right now. Next week, we'll be doing it for 8086, for 8085 as well. Anyway, because there's been tremendous demand from students to implement it on the simulator and run the programs because that's what happens in practical exam. Theory exam, somehow students manage, some students... Um, leave programming as an option. I don't suggest that, but some students do it. It's a personal choice how you, the university gives you a choice. So that's your prerogative. But practical exam, there is no escaping from programming. So many students who get nervous in practicals don't know because they haven't implemented it. I gave you the uh, PDF in the previous video. Even in this video, you'll be getting a PDF on my website. In that PDF, there will be the link to uh, download the EdSim simulator. If you want to know how to install it, I've given the previous video, it's damn, it's super simple. You don't really need any instructions. Download the simulator, clear, run it, it it's self-installed. Within 30 seconds, it's up and ready. I've given you programs, copy and paste those programs if you're too uh, nervous to type them for the first time. No shortcuts here, this is the first time. Run the program, see you're happy, you get the result, then play with it. It's your playground, the first time somebody teaches you how to drive a car, they are gonna hold the hand for you, they're gonna hold the steering. But but once you get used to it, then you practice and you it's a skill programming, like swimming, like cycling, horse riding, guitaring. It's a skill. The, the teacher will teach you this much, will teach you how to do it. Thereafter, it's your own interest and love for it, the passion for it that will make you better and better. Acquire the skill till the time you master it until the time you can call yourself. Yes, I'm a programmer. Give me the question. I can write a program for it. Anyway, soon I'll get you there. Uh, in theory, we have done a lot of programs. Some of them were not even done in theory. Now we're doing it in theory also, in practice also. And we'll keep making, making more videos like these. Again, once again, before I end, thank you so much for all the lovely messages. Yes, more programs will be coming up. If there are particular programs that you would like please whatsapp me my number is given up down in the description whatsapp me the question that you would want i'll make a program for it wish you all the best do well see you on my website have a good one